So the game got a big old patch update. You can read about it on Steam. But the thing I am most excited about is that they removed Carnite from Power Pack creation. Ah! So now I can stop running the tutorial for free Power Packs because that was getting old. Hello fellow Windows. my name is Rob and welcome to another video in the tutorial series. Today we're going to be talking about propulsion and framing. Um, and we're not going to talk much about framing, I just wanted to touch on a key thing. So most of this video is going to be devoted to propulsion systems, as always timestamps in the description or in the little scroll bar down there as you can skip ahead to whatever you want. I also want to say we have now passed well beyond 1,000 subs. Yeah! Happy day. Uh, thank you all for subscribing, all those people who have and all those people who will. Let's keep this train going, will we? I am very excited about keeping the content coming your way and finding interesting things about this game and others that we can share and talk about. So... Um, also, before we get started, I just wanted to say, if you think uh, that you'd like me to cover a very in-depth um, overview of like all of the user interface and everything in the ship creator, let me know in the discussion down there in the comment section. If I get enough people that say that they want that kind of thing, I will do a specific video on like every single button down here and what it does. Uh, if you think that would help. Um, but otherwise, we're going to be covering a couple different topics. So this one, we're talking about uh, engine types and framing, and then we're going to have another video on propulsion systems and another video on how to build out your cockpit uh, with your, uh, uh, what do you call them, displays and panels and buttons and all that stuff. So let's get right ahead and started. Let's talk about framing. So there's two different ways you can do this. Um, you can have an overall frame shape and you wanna make sure that there's enough supports in between um, all of these. You don't wanna just use the 384 uh, centimeter beams everywhere and have giant holes because then you're gonna have to go back and uh, put beams anyway to attach hard points and other things that you want like paneling, uh, you know, you need the overlaps um, once you start putting paneling on it. So the way I like to do it is I start with a basic frame. Now, if you're doing like a interesting uh, ship design where you have two sections that are symmetrical to each other, what we could do is cut this in half and then I could just work on the left-hand side. And then once that's finished, I can copy and paste it to the other side. However, the downside is there's no mirror tool in this game. So you got to do a little bit of wonkiness uh, to get it to match up with the other side. So let's say I had an engine that came off like in this direction. Well, if I copied and pasted it on this side, the engine would be going in this direction. So down. So yeah. So for now, until there's a mirror system, I am kind of just building out like the whole frame and then copying parts and pasting parts and uh, getting a little wonky. But you can see here, I started with the kind of aft end, I guess this is the aft end of the ship, and I did a basic framing here that I can use, whoops, nope, I have the uh, durability tool open, um, that I can use for a basic framework. And then because of the awesomeness of the creator, what I can do is I can just select all, I can either, you know, highlight like this or control A, and uh, what I can do then is I can hold shift down and just drag. And I talked about this in my tips and tricks video. But uh, yeah, so we can just go ahead and copy this um, repeatedly until we have kind of the semblance of like, let's say that this is this is just a mining uh, freighter. We just want to maximize the capacity of mining crates and engine space. So we'll just get this all lined up. And uh, I'm getting pretty good at getting these things to snap where I want them instead of having to use the arrow keys, uh, the arrow tool. 
or the movement tool, whatever you want to call it. And of course, now that I say that, it's going to give me issues. There we go. So you kind of see how easy that is now that we've copied, pasted it repeatedly. Um, we have the overall shape of our ship. Um, and oh, I can see I did not snap correctly back here. So, uh, yeah, that's going to be problematic. So we'll just, we'll just, uh, control Z to undo and, uh, try this again. And, uh, you know, this time pay attention. <laughs> All right. So you get the point. Um, you can just kind of get these where you want to go. And I guess I will use the arrow key tool on this one just to get it to go faster. There we go. Uh, you can also still drag while you're in the um, move tool. So I can still do this with the move tool open. And then if I don't get it lined up correctly, I can just go boop. Oh, I got to use the right arrow. Boop, 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 boop. There we go. And if we're running out of space here, um, we could just go ahead and copy the whole thing. Again, control A. We can do that and uh, just move it back here in space so I can continue to add more uh, to the front. Um, and obviously, you know, you can do bigger chunks now. We got like half a ship built. I can just go whoop and uh, pull that whole piece out instead of doing it piecemeal and get your frames all set up. So now when you start adding in engines and hard points and all that stuff, you're going to realize that you need to add a bit more framing in those sections. Um, and cargo crates can be a bit problematic as well as far as like nailing down, but we're not going to talk about that in this video. So that's pretty much it for basic framing, right? Um, you just want to get something built out and go. And I want to talk about a couple uh, other points here. Um, so you can see like this beam is just attached directly to this beam right here. Um, you do not need to use the corner pieces. Uh, it might seem like, oh, I need to use the intersection beams and corner beams, um, but the, you don't really. Uh, you can if you want to, if it's going to make your life easier, or if it's going to make your ship prettier, or for whatever reason. But in general, you just need to attach a beam, and it needs to touch another beam. And then we'll go ahead and use the uh, welding tool, make sure apply all is selected, and click, and whoop everything's welded now if we look at the stability tool we're still yellow and it's gonna oh my god really it didn't line up there and also it's showing that i have an issue here because these are not lined up uh so let's undo it looked like it lined up <sighs> so it's make yeah whatever i don't know double check triple check uh quadruple check you don't want to get into your build and then realize later oh shit that's not in the right location and then be screwed because you can't back up there we go all right weld tool hit the weld button all good to go so you're going to see this in yellow until you start adding um plates and once you start adding plates then it'll uh, realize that this is a frame so if we go ahead and grab like this plate here we just slap this on top like right here and then we can use the auto bolter to just go ahead and bolt it on there and if we put enough panels um, it'll eventually turn green and that means that you have full stability uh, but until you start putting paneling and all the other stuff on, um, don't worry about it being yellow. Just keep building and you'll be fine. You don't need to add more supports or anything else. Uh, you're good to go. Also, I want to touch on that you do not need to uh, use one beam type. So beam stability does not get affected by using smaller beams to extend. So you can see that this is a 192 piece. This is a 96, this is a 48, and this is a 24. So whatever you need to do to get your beams to fit in there, once it's welded, it is one beam. 
So it doesn't care that it's one beam made up of four parts. It's still one beam. So as many parts as you need, I mean, you could build an entire beam out of uh, 24 centimeter pieces and just go boop, 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 and then weld it, and it considers itself to be one beam. And that is how that works. Um, obviously, I would need upright beams in here because this is not going to support uh, all of the uh, power of my engines and everything else. So we would need to put a couple uprights in here in specific places. But for now, this is a good uh, start in your framing. All right, let's talk about engines. So right off the bat, there are four main propulsion types in this game currently in three different tiers. Each tier offers more power. However, there will also be changes in power consumption and electricity usage. Um, I am not going to talk about the plasma engines because, my God, I tried to figure out how the hell those things go together. And I'm just like, holy shit, uh, what am I looking at? Because if you look over here, um, we have plasma thruster, superconductor, plasma thrusters. Oh, okay, that's a mirror, um, I think. Nope, structure. Plasma constructor, supercrutcher, super superconductor, plasma thruster nozzle collar, plasma thruster nozzle, plasma thruster frame, plasma thruster engine, plasma thruster core, plasma thruster uh, capacitor struct, plasma thruster capacitor. And I'm just like, ah. Uh, uh, so I had all these pieces out and, uh, the only thing I could figure out how to put together was the nozzle and the nozzle collar. So I will do a separate video on that. However, this is like really end game stuff. If you look at like what it's, what it takes to build a plasma engine, you need like plutonium, umerium, uh, arcanium, um, some of these other things, agesium. Um, so there's a lot of high tier materials in producing a plasma engine. However, um, which piece has the thruster information on it? Um, these put out a lot of power. Um, however, I don't see on here which one has the power information. Um, so if we look up here, we're gonna, just going to talk about the box thrusters and the triangle thrusters and the um, maneuvering thrusters. So, box thruster. It's a box. You've probably seen these on most of the starter ships. It is very boxy. Uh, each of these engines needs to be connected to the next engine. Um, they all need a uh, uh, device hard point in order to be connected, um, and they do not, like... From what I found, they they all need to be connected individually. So that's the downsides of that. Um, triangle engines can all be snapped together, and only one of them has to be connected to a hard point. So that is a benefit added there. However, if we looked at the stats, so, whoops, I didn't want to do that. So if we look at the stats here, we can see that Tier 1 has a thrust power of 400,000, Tier 2 has a thrust power of 440, and Tier 3 has a thrust power of 520. Um, each of them has different electricity usage and propellant usage. So this one's 240 electricity, 30 propellant. This one is 216 electricity, 27 propellant. So you get more power, less energy. However, tier three, you get more thrust, but also more propellant use and more electricity usage. Um, and that electricity usage uh, goes into like how fast you're burning through your fuel rods, how fast your battery is getting depleted, etc. If we look at our triangle thrusters, we have a thrust power of 240 per. Um, so these each individually have a lower thrust power. This one's 264 and this one's 312. But as we start strapping them together, we get uh, higher numbers. So we can double our thrust power by putting two and et cetera, right? So how do these go together? Well, each thruster has the same parts, except for the plasma, which is why we're not talking about it. Um, you have your body, your combustion chamber, and your nozzle. And also these two pieces here, the thruster electricity converter and the thruster propellant converter. 
So three main parts and two kind of battery converter things. So a total of five. So how do these go together? Well, you slide the uh, combustion chamber inside the engine here and you connect the box thruster to the front, the, uh, the nozzle, and it snaps on there. And you stick these in the corresponding slots. So the purple goes to the purple and the blue goes to the blue. And that is your complete body on this one. And then you just got to nail it together. So we can use our auto nailer to kind of get the internals nailed together. However, I have found that the auto nailer likes to ignore these capacitors. So we have to go ahead and manually nail these together. Now, if you're in the builder, a handy thing to do is go ahead and select the entire, make sure I'm on the selection tool, go ahead and select the entire thing. And you can go up here to the top and click create and that creates this as a module um, which just means all of these parts are now one piece so different than well kind of the same as the easy build but not really so if we click on this green piece right here it will automatically select the whole thing and then we can drag it around or we can duplicate it and it will duplicate everything um, we can also click on this and we can click uh, on the module there we go we can click save module and that'll bring up a window here where you type in the name so we would call this tier one box thruster t1 box thruster and we can click save module and then it goes into your saved modules down here uh why are you not showing up weird Uh, I might have to refresh or something on that. Uh, but that's how you do it. Um, you can see that down here I have the tier two and the tier two triangle thruster saved under here and my like mining laser uh, build um, so that I can just paste those again as completed modules and I have to put all the pieces together. Uh, so triangle thruster, same thing. You got your combustion chamber. Boop. Come on. There we go. And your nozzle. And then same thing. You get your purple and your blue. And that is now a complete thing. And then we can select all. Well, actually, let's bolt it together first so it saves the bolts too. And again, it did not bolt the uh, capacitors here. So let's go ahead and green and green and same thing on this side we got our green and green good to go and now we can save that as a module and uh there we have it our uh, completed thrusters so if we wanted to with the triangle thrusters we can go ahead and create a bigger thruster with this so if i shift drag here and then i could use the uh, x and y keys to kind of flip it over here and we want to make sure it's facing the right direction come on there we go so we could also do this um that's how they snap together uh, and if you see on the side here there's this little uh kind of hexagonal plate that is your power pass through so as long as these are touching um, your uh, engines are connected. Um, so they all share the same power, same fuel, etc. Um, and then we can also copy this whole thing and we can create that as a module. And now we have a kind of square thruster. Um, and say we can pull that out, we can duplicate it, um, make a uh, bigger box, etc. Select all those, we could turn that into a module. Um, however you wanted to do it, right? So this right here is how the triangle thrusters kind of go together. And then you have to bolt them all, make sure they're all bolted together so that they don't all come apart. Um, now with these, only one of them has to be connected to a hard point. 
So if we look at like this hard point, we can see that the images match up here. So we would flip this over, stick it to like this one, and then it is good to go. Uh, all the rest of these share this connection. So with the box thrusters, you can stack these on top of each other. However, on the, there we go. On the uh, one I created, it did not seem that these share power through them. I feel like they should, but they didn't. So I ended up having to put a hard point on each of these. So uh, you can, you would have a, you would have to have the top connected to a device hard point and the bottom connected to a device hard point. Now, if you have encountered where you haven't had to connect them to a hard point, let me know in the comments section. But as far as I know, or as far as I have experimented with, it has required me to connect both of them uh, to their own individual hard point in order to get them to work. So let's talk about how to mount these. So if you have these in your ship, um, the requirement is not that this piece has to be bolted to the engine. So this doesn't make any sense to me, but this is the way the game works because it seems to me if the engine is bolted to the frame and this is bolted to the engine, then it should be good to go. However, your hard points have to be bolted to the frame as well. Otherwise, for some reason, it just doesn't make the engine go. So if we were to take this uh, box thruster here and uh, pull it over and flip it around here. And uh, let's say we wanted to put it right here, so to speak. Uh, let's move it a little forward. There we go. All right, we'll put it right there. Uh, if in order to have this actually function, I would need a device, device hard point right here. Um, boop, come on. There we go. Um, but it would have to be connected to a frame. So I would actually want it to be right here. Come on. All right. And then, well, that's not going to line up. So we'd have to put more struts down there in order to get it. Um, so let's say we're going to put this right here. So then we just got to make sure that the engine connects on top of it. There we go. And then not only do we have to bolt it to the engine, so we'd also have to bolt it to the beams. So we can do that by just shoving a ton of bolts right here. Um, we could build a structure around it or underneath it. Uh, so I could take a beam 72 and put that here. And then shoot bolts through that way. That's not connected. There we go. So that would have to go there. I could put another one going here and another one going this way. So we build like a box around it and then just shoot bolts through the sides to make sure that this is connected to the frame. And then the engine will fire. Um, you know, otherwise you could build it the other way. You could stack um, the boxes up, uh, but you just have to make sure that they are all connected correctly uh, and that these uh, hard points are bolted to the frame and uh, I had that I was troubleshooting for like an hour trying to figure out why aren't my engines turning on make sure all my cables were connected etc etc and uh, finally I saw on a on a reddit post that somebody was like make sure you bolt the uh, hard point to the frame and I went back and I just shot a bunch of bolts like I did just there and suddenly they turned on so bolted to the body, bolted to the frame, and also make sure that your engine is bolted down too. Otherwise you'll get the uh, bad stability. You see how it's red right now? That's because it's not bolted 
Uh, so if I use the auto auto bolter here, everything turns green and we're good to go. Uh, you can also see my frame just turned green because I put one engine there and I don't understand how that makes the entire frame green now instead of yellow. Oh, one engine makes all the difference, I suppose. So that is how that works. And for uh, power and data, right, you would just need to make sure that you have a data line connected. And you would make sure that you have a pipe line connected. And these things can function as pass-throughs. So if you had another engine, you could just go straight out of this one into the next engine, et cetera, et cetera. Now, uh, that said, I am finding that these box uh, triangle thrusters are a lot more appealing for me uh, because you don't have to do quite as much work. You just have to make sure that one of these is connected and the rest of them are good to go. So same thing, this, has to, this piece right here has to be bolted to a frame, so you can either build a frame behind it uh, that's attached to another frame, or you can build a frame around it and bolt on that way. And then the same thing, each of these has to be attached to a frame, so you would want a piece going across here, a piece going down here, a piece going down here, just so you could shoot bolts into it from behind. Whoops. So hopefully that helps uh, in terms of these engines. Now, one last thing before we get finished, we're going to talk about the maneuver engine here, maneuver thruster. So these have a very low thrust power. If we look at maneuvering thrusters, even tier twos right here, they only produce 44,000 power, pa uh, power thrust. Uh, I, don't, I don't know if that's like per power per inch, but I don't know. Uh, we'll just say that, you know, comparatively, these have a very low thrust, uh, ability. However, they also take up very little electricity and they take up a very little, uh, propellant. So you can use regular thrusters as a, um, maneuvering thruster, as long as they're named correctly, and we'll talk about that in flight controller and all that other stuff uh, when we get to that in the videos. Um, but you're also using up uh, more power and more fuel. Um, so if you want to turn really fast, uh, that's one way to go. Um, and you can also use them to face forward to kind of brake faster or go in reverse faster. But otherwise, if you are putting maneuvering thrusters on your ship, again, they need to be attached to a hard point. The hard point needs to be bolted to the frame, and the maneuvering thruster needs to be bolted to the hard point. And then, of course, it needs data and, uh, well, I say data, but it needs a cable and a pipe. So cables uh, transfer electricity and data, and pipes just transfer fuel. Um, so where would you put these? Well, if you consider the ship has a um, pole going right through the center of it. Um, you would want to put them so that when you fire them, the ship would spin around that pole or your center of mass. So uh, optimally, you put a couple of them um, on each of your corners or um, sides. So you would want one on the rear left, the front left, the rear... Don't do that. The rear right. Now I can't move at all. What? There we go. The rear, uh, rear left, uh, sorry, rear right, front right. And then you would want to put one in this corner. So your back, uh, your top back right, your top back left, your top front right your top front left, uh, your bottom uh, back right, your bottom back left, and then your bottom front left and your bottom front right. And that gives you a complete uh, control on all your axes. Now you can put more of these on the sides, but that's really only gonna help you out if you're strafing. 
So if you're building a ship to strafe, you would want to put more down the length of your ship, but really you only need them on each of those axes. So what's that going to do? Well, if I'm trying to uh, yaw, then this one and this one would fire to keep me keep that ship spinning uh, on that center axis. Otherwise, if this one just fired, it would push the back over, but the front would kind of stay in the same position, so you would just be scooting your ass that way. Um, same thing with rolling. You need this one and this one firing, as well as the bottom uh, two on that side firing, so that your ship rolls around that, uh, like a pole going down the center of your ship. Otherwise, if you were just firing these two, you would just kind of push this side of the ship down and this side of the ship would stay the same. So you would just kind of list. Um, same thing with pitching up. You would want the bottom two. If you're pitching up, you need the front bottom two firing and the top two firing. So uh, hopefully that makes sense. I kind of give a better description um, once we go and mount all these to a frame. Unfortunately, unless you are uh, like sticking a chair on top of a ship um, to test them out, you can't quite see them all firing, but you can kind of feel them um, in terms of is the ship maneuvering correctly because uh, if not you'll get kind of wonky behaviors and then you can go ahead and figure out like oh great which of these thrusters is not firing so if we go ahead and we look at the anubis we see that we have the left and right front we have the we have two here on the edges in the back and we got two there. Um, and then we have these three here, which aren't going to really do much. Um, but you can see the same thing on the bottom. We've got the two there. And we've got the downward facing one here. And then we've got one here. And uh, this one here would probably push it over optimally. It would be better if it was placed back here. But then you would interfere with the uh, engine's uh, placement. So... Maybe not the best placement, but you can also see on this that we are using these thrusters for uh, side maneuvering, and also we have these th these uh, triangle thrusters pointing forward, so they are functioning as stopping uh, brakes too. Um, at this point, like these uh, these maneuvering thrusters facing forward are uh, are kind of redundant because you have those triangle thrusters down there. But you always want to have forward-facing ones because that's going to help you with stopping and reversing. Um, otherwise, you'd be kind of SOL uh, and just waiting for your ship to stop. You won't be able to back up or anything like that. All right, so I just wanted to throw in a, a couple completed examples there at the end. Um, but that is how everything works. If you have any questions, please go ahead and drop them in the comment section. Um, next up, we'll be talking about power systems and how to put together what you need for a ship's basics. So generators, uh, batteries, fuel, etc. If you like this video, don't forget to drop that thumbs up. It really does help small content creators. So me and your favorite other content creators, give that thumbs up whenever you see a video that you like. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. And uh, if you want to be notified every time I drop a video, go ahead and hit that notification bell. Uh, and uh, YouTube will uh, annoyingly tell you, hey, new video, hey, new video, hey, new video. <laughs> Until next time, I will see you out here in space. Stay safe, my friends.